What's cooking in the kitchen with one and only John Rivers. Hi, Barbara. <laughs> hey, John. How are you? Four River Smokehouse and the Coop. And today, John, I'm so excited because we're going to be doing something that is kind of comfort food. Absolutely. Making me happy yes, here. Yes, food we grew up eating. Absolutely. Food we're going to make a chicken fried steak. Okay. Now, chicken fried steak is very misunderstood. If you said it, like, what is chicken fried steak? Yeah. Most people chicken. would say chicken. Sure. But it's not. It's, it's chicken fried steak. So right. It's actually a beef steak that we're going to cook it like fried chicken. And that's okay. where the name comes right. from. So there's lots of steaks that you can use. And people use different ones. And it doesn't come out quite as tender. I found if you use a cube steak, okay, okay it's going to have that, you know, the properties. You're going to let it break down so that when you bite in it, you don't want it to taste like you know, a chunk of steak. You want it to melt in your mouth. Mm -hmm. And this one is going to do that. Now, something that we can do to help it, we're going to season it with a little bit of salt and pepper here. Yeah. And we're going to pound it. Okay. 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 Something that really helps. And what that does is it breaks down the fibers. Yeah. If you like to do it, we always do it with a flat and side. And why is that? I always wondered about that. That's a tenderizer. Okay. okay. But we are tenderizing it or not? Well, we'll we, you know, we don't want to go too far down because see how loose it is already? Well, you don't want me to do it real hard. Do you want me to do it soft? Just, yeah, just, there we go. Tap, 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 rather and than. And you're doing two things. Yep. You're spreading it out. Okay. And you're breaking down some of those, those fibers that mm -hmm. hold it. And you're making it even. So now that's good. Okay. <laughs> I was going to do a regressive, yeah, I know, go. right? Not at all. Now, Not does all. the salt really help to make it more tender? Absolutely. Okay. Salt is a tenderizer first, okay. then a seasoner second. Nice. Yep. And um, so what we're going to do, we're going to do a double dip. We're going to roll it in some flour here. Okay. What's in your flour? I put a little salt, a little pepper, a little in garlic. In your flour. Uh -huh, a little okay. cayenne. Yeah, just to drive a little more And it's all-purpose, not, not self-rising. All-purpose, all purpose right. flour. Okay. okay. Dip it in a little bit of milk. Okay. Oh, just plain milk. Just plain milk. Nothing's in there but milk. Okay. Nothing. All right, and then going to make sure all of it's covered in flour. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's looking good already. All right, and now I've got a little bit of oil over here. I just use a vegetable oil. Okay. And I, oh, actually, what I'm going to do is I seasoned it with bacon. So I'm going to lay it in there and see how thin it is. Yeah, um, because it's thin, it's going to cook fast. Okay. Okay, so, which is really nice about this, too. Mm, now, this, it's already smelling good. <laughs> now, this oil is picking up lots of wonderful flavors. Now, you see it's not submerged in it, so it's not a deep fry. Right. Okay, it, it goes up. This is even just a little bit high. I like it about halfway up. Okay. And then, because we're going to flip it and get it on the other side. It's so barely cover the bottom of your pan, really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I really do. And it's picking up a lot of flavors from the meat and stuff. Mm -hmm. And this oil will actually serve as the base for the gravy the as gravy. well. Yes. Yep. Yes. Yep. And we're going to try to put as much flour as you have remaining oil in here. That's the secret of a, of a gravy recipe. Equal ratio of flour and liquid. Did not know that. Yep. And if okay. you don't have it that way, it'll get out of a wonky on you real quick. Yeah. <laughs> it won't yeah. come out good. And so maybe a couple minutes on each side? Is that all minutes, it's all it takes. Okay. Yep. And um, you don't want it so hot that it's burning right. the flour in there. You just want it to cook it. Well, I can't wait to see, because we've talked about this before, John, how your your gravy always ends up without dumplings. My, some people call them lumps. I call them dumplings, mm -hmm. so because that sounds like it's better and edible. But how do you keep lumps out of your gravy? I'll, I'll show you. Okay. As a matter of fact, actually, this is your secret to it. Ah, okay. yeah, I don't have a whisk. Yeah, yep. that <laughs> and not turning your back on it mm. and, and putting the flour in really nice and slow. Gradually. Okay. Yeah. okay. It's almost like a, you ever made a roux before? Have we made a roux here on the show? A what? A roux. <laughs> I don't think we have. Uh -huh. We might have, but uh -huh. I don't remember that. <laughs> it's the, you know, the secret, the roux is the base of um, gumbos. Oh, no, we definitely and, have not. Okay. No. Well, we'll make a gumbo. I, know, I love a good gumbo. Like a gumbo. With uh, okra, say. right? Oh, okra yes. and tomatoes. Okra. I'm a, I'm a uh, lover of gumbo. You know what gumbo means in Gumbo? Spaghetti? No. It means okra. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. does That's it where really? came from. Yeah. And all these people who know what gumbo is, but they don't know what okra is. I don't understand that. Now we get it. Okra is gumbo. Absolutely. I well, love okra. Well, that's, that's, you know, okra, the whole dish actually came from Africa when, um, you know, all the folks came over yeah. from Africa. And yeah. that's where it came from. Yeah, and that's where all the flavors came Did from. Did not know that. Now, I'll even go so far. My, I don't love boiled okra, but my kids love boiled okra. Yeah. They don't even mind the, the slime. Oh, really? But I like it more in a gumbo or a soup. Ah. So... All right, I'll looking tell you what, good. That is looking pretty. All right, now, what are we going to do with all I'm this oil? Turn that down. That, all that oil is going to be part of the gravy? It, it's an awful lot in there. It is okay? a lot of oil. That would mean we would add a ton of gravy, okay. a, ton a ton of ton flour, of flour to it. Right. What you do, I, we're not going to make it all here because okay. it's too much. But as you put it in, if you see how I turned it down yes, a little bit, and you really right. want it to even cool a little bit more. Yes. 
and I'm slowly going to bring as much flour in uh -huh. as I have oil in there. Okay. And it's a constant, constant, constant flow like this mm -hmm. so that you don't avoid your clumps. I don't see any lumps forming. Not yet. No <laughs> dumplings in John Rivers gravy. You see how sick it is? <laughs> you see now all those wonderful flavors that we got from yes. the bacon being in there yes. and the meat and the chicken. It all is going to incorporate in here. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you know, once it gets really thick and sticky, we'll add like a buttermilk. Okay. And that's where the term buttermilk gravy comes from. You know, it's the final liquid that you add into it. I've got it on low. Okay, I'm going to embarrass somebody right now. I mean, it's not going to be you, so you'll be happy to know this. But do you remember our cute little Carly who, who used to be here at the station? Oh, Occasionally yes. we get people asking, where's Carly? Where's Carly? Well, Carly went to work for her husband. But before she went, she and I did a cooking segment here yes. together. And I was using buttermilk for a chicken pot pie. Mm -hmm. And she had no clue what buttermilk was. She's like, what? Is, and oh this my. is over the air, too. She's like, what is buttermilk? So what is buttermilk from, buttermilk from the chef? Buttermilk is milk that has vinegar added to it. Vinegar. You take one gallon of milk and you add um, about one tablespoon of vinegar to it. Yeah. And it gives it that little bitter taste. Okay. And that's all buttermilk is. So it's, it's not butter? Uh, well, no. I mean, there's, there's, there's butter. There's butter. Sort of. Yeah, it's cream. Right. You know? All right. And wow. This is what our final dish. That <laughs> looks wonderful. <laughs> looks like. And this is, if I were to go to the coop, I would get mashed potatoes. I can get the sides that I want, but you have mashed potatoes, you have green beans, and I see some onions and. Um, A little bit of ham hock in there ham, for of flavor. Course. And cornbread. Yes. And, and cornbread. Everything. Now, would I get this big a piece of meat? Yes. Yes, you sure will. Okay. But you see how thin it is? That, that makes it oh, really yeah, that nice. Helps. And, right. <laughs> yeah. All right. I have to, I have to taste. I have to taste, right? Yes, that's, that's just fine. All right. See you what offend this, the cook if you don't. Absolutely. Melts in your mouth. Good. Melts in Good. your mouth. You see how fast it fries. Mm -hmm. It doesn't take long at all. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to overcook it. It's like a steak. If you don't you don't want mm -hmm. you don't want it well done. John Rivers, Four Rivers Steakhouse, Steakhouse. <laughs> it might be a steakhouse we'll one day if you keep the doing name this. Now. Thank you, Barbara. All marketing <laughs> department. Four River, Rivers Smokehouse and the Coop. Only seen on Good Life 45 where hope happens. Thank you so much, John, for being here with us today. This is delicious. Like Stay with us, viewers. We've got more coming up. <laughs>